Restoring this old rust bucket into an awesome go-kart with slicks, a new engine, a live axle. I picked up this frame exactly how you see it right there for a hundred dollars. Now, I typically would not have spent that much for a frame, except they included that Honda engine. And of course, some oversized wheels. That is probably the reason why they gave up on the project. So let's dive into the disassembly and as you saw there's not much there so it only took a matter of about 20 minutes. I do want to point out that when I am disassembling everything I make sure I take a bunch of pictures and I always combine the nut with the fastener that it went to just to save the headache of reassembling assuming you are going to be reusing those same fasteners. I ended up scoring big with this frame and that's because as I showed you earlier it came with some wheels it comes with that just pretty much that Briggs engine block right there nothing more than that and that Honda engine and I was pretty stoked when I saw that because I was able to turn that around and sell it by itself for 80 bucks and then the wheels and everything else that I wasn't going to be using for another 40 bucks. So I ended up making 20 bucks out of this deal, but okay, you gotta add in time and gas and all that fun stuff. Either way, it's all torn down, and now time to get this sucker down to some paintable or workable surface. And the best way to do that would be, of course, yes, yeah, sandblasting, but I mean, I ain't nobody got time for that. All I'm doing is just a quick surface prep, and that is sufficient enough. Uh, I say enough. I'll dive more into that here in a minute, okay? And if you don't have a conditioning tool, no need to go get one. Just some elbow grease will get the job done. It obviously will just take a bit longer. Yes, there should be a support bar right there, and I'm going to add one here in a second. But uh, the only other logical thing that came to my mind was, why not add a live axle while we're already making modifications? So let's hack it up even a little more and do just that. Should I have used round tubing? Sure, but I bet you didn't notice the mismatched shapes at the first. So here we are. Last year, I actually restored a frame that was identical to this one. Turned out awesome, and then I sold it because, well, that's what I do. And this little guy right here and his brother never let me hear the end of it. So this one, I did kind of want to take the extra, I guess, time and features to make it all right to then be able to keep it and make sure that we have it for many years to come. If you've seen my other videos, you know I have a special place in my heart for that Titanium 125 welder. It really is just an awesome, easy machine to always just pull out and just to do up some quick little jobs here and there. These little bearing brackets are 3 16ths and was able to do those single pass, no issues. As you can see, it is a flux core, so taking a look at that weld shot, there is a bunch of spatter and smoke, which really is a sweet shot just as a welder it's kind of mesmerizing and this machine ended up breezing right through this project since going with a live axle my axis was lowered by a couple inches not too big of a deal except i needed a new bolt or mounting for my brake band I had some scrap 8 by 2 inch flat bar, which was left over from my welding table. So, yes, it is worth buying a whole bunch of extra for all those little odd and end projects you don't think of until later. It was as simple as welding it on, then drilling out a hole for the bolt. After all that welding and cleanup, I do a quick wipe down with acetone. This does get rid of any of that residual dust, dirt, debris, or or spatter kind of gunk left over from the flux core welding. For the actual primer, it is just a basic rattle can of Rust-Oleum primer, and this works great. Lots of times I don't even use that because they do have a good two-part primer plus paint product that really does an excellent job. But I am wanting to switch colors, and using a primer should get a better consistency with the color I want to go with. And you already know from the thumbnail that I went with an awesome neon green. Now, I tested out about three or four different types of green. And what I was looking for was the actual overall color. And the one that popped the most was a marking type spray paint. I thought, hey, it's a spray paint. Why not use it? 
Well, that was a huge mistake. They put different additives or other type of stuff in it to make it a marking type spray paint. In other words, it will wash away, it smudge it, it doesn't harden and leave a nice finish. So even though right off the bat, it looked great, it took forever to dry and every time I touched it, it would just peel away or chip away and leave a whole bunch of smudges. And that was even after trying to put a bunch of lacquer or gloss finishes on it. So, learn from my mistake, don't get marking paint. If this video gets 1 million views, then I will strip this down yet again and I will do a proper powder coating. So just know from here on out, there's gonna be some ugly paint spots and you're just gonna have to deal with it. So after a week of being done with messing around with a paint, I figured let's just get to reassembling with it. And so it actually went a lot easier after this. And that's mostly because if you noticed or took my advice from the beginning, that was to connect or reattach the bolts and fasteners as you take it off, you know exactly how to reassemble it. There were a bunch of odds and ends that did not come with the cart, like pedals, some cables, that kind of stuff. I just picked it up wherever I could find the cheapest, whether it be Amazon or eBay, and it worked. With how ugly the floor pan turned out with that, you know, the paint job, I decided to use some ACM, which is some aluminum composite material. And well, my neighbors kind of turned me on to it. It's actually what he made my new pegboard out of just shown right there either way i will actually show the reveal of this at the end which i absolutely loved how this turned out typically it's used for construction material but hey why not a go-kart floor pan from my other go-kart videos a very common question is how do you do the seat well i try to make it as simple as possible so i just go stick with some cheap osb i stack it uh, with two of them for the bottom seat portion just because I'm using half inch if you go thicker then sure one will be fine and this is just some three inch foam now typically I do like two inch a bit better and that's just because it actually uh, folds over the corners better with the actual fabric but hey this is what Walmart had on sale so I picked it up it will work fine and it will be a bit more comfy for the underside I'm actually adding some nuts and what these are these allow it so then you can bolt in from the opposite side and make sure that it's really stuck to the frame and the actual fabric itself is some green my green marine grade vinyl now this is you can pick it up anywhere online any fabric store will have it i've used a couple different types i haven't really found one that's really better over the other it needs to say marine grade vinyl and it's as simple as getting a nail gun you can just use a small stapler if you want just make sure it's bigger bigger than your you know school stapler but I'm using a pneumatic stapler. This is just with some half inch staples. You start with one side and you'll actually see me pushing down on the edges. And that's just so then when you fold the fabric over and staple it, when you lift off, and that just makes a perfect easy seat that is very comfortable as well with that three inch foam. Adding just those final touches for both the pedals and then the seat just so then everything matches. It has a nice black and green contrast. Turned out great. For the axle, some things that I have learned that you will want to know is when you pick a size of axle, stick with that throughout. So for example, this is a one inch. So that means that those bearings, they're one inch bearings. And then also the hubs. You need a hub, hub for the brake and for the sprocket. Just make sure it all matches and then you're not having to return anything or modify things because they don't fit. Of course, we're not using those Harbor Freight cheap rims and wheels. I picked up some nice Douglas wheels. Now they are used and I am totally fine with that. I went to a carting shop and I said, hey, you got any cheap rims that you want to get rid of? They said, sure. These ones have some scratches, dents. I said, that is totally fine. I paid 15 bucks for each one of those rims. And then the tires, they threw in for free. And that's just because typically carding races, they only use them for a couple and then they're done. I actually wanted to show you how to mount a tire, which really is not too difficult. 
but the key point is to always change out the valve stem it's that easy as you know snipping off the old and popping on the new and mounting I would say the biggest uh, advice I have is to use some type of spray, lubricant, Windex, whatever you want, just to lube up that wheel. And you really do just slide it over. You got to use some little elbow grease sometimes by pushing down on it. And then give it some air until those beads pop and you are set. Tap, tap, tap These are for the wheel hubs. Now, as mentioned before, I got these from a carding supply or a carding place. And so those wheels actually had metric diameter bolt pattern. So it's not an issue. You can find hubs for either or. Just make sure you pick up the ones that will match your axle and your hub. Harbor Freight had a sale, not like they don't every other weekend. So why wouldn't we go with a brand new Predator 212 engine? And hey, it comes in black, so it matches perfectly with all of those other accessories. Now for the centrifugal clutch, pretty simple. Hey, if you need a spacer, use PVC. This is a three quarter inch centrifugal clutch with a number 35 chain. I know that's a mouthful, but you need to match the bore size of the engine and then obviously match the chain size of the clutch with your sprocket. On to hooking up the linkage for the throttle. Pretty easy. If you can find that 10 millimeter socket, just take off the air cover and that just gives you a lot of access to work around up there. We're gonna be loosening that throttle uh, linkage right there and that's just so then it opens and closes easily. And then take your cable now you want to take the outside sheathing and that's what you're actually clamping down and then right here is you are tightening down the cable itself not the sheathing we already did that this is just the cable and it's really as simple as that but take note i like to add an extra little spring just so then it makes sure that it's always in the closed position oh and this this is just a simple little trick so then you don't have the pull cord going into the back of the seat when ordering your chain, make sure you get a master link, and that's just because you're gonna have to adjust it, the length, just to get the right size, and then you use a master link to get it back together. Hey, remember how I told you how I was gonna reveal that little ACM at the end? Well, here you go. It's the aluminum composite material. I think it turned out amazing. Of course, missing just one little minor detail. How about a 3D printed DIY Pro logo? Let's get it cranked up and start cruising. Now, of course, people are gonna ask, hey, are you gonna sell this one? No, my boys will definitely not let me sell this one. It's gonna be around in the family for a while. How fast does it go? Well, with the sprocket that I have, which is about a 60 tooth on the rear, it can go about 20 to 25. Yes, you can change that and go faster or slower. And lastly, the price, I actually have no clue. I gotta calculate it, so I'll put it up on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.